Thank you, James. Uh, Ashley, I just thought actually I need to make you into a co-host. Ashley's going to do the Earth and Sky bit for us in a little while, promote to panellists. There we go. Right, Tiho. Uh, about 10 days ago now, I think, maybe a little bit less, I said to folks I had sold all my US stocks. I sold all the blue chips that I'd bought recently on the dips. And I had somebody saying, well, don't you wish you'd stayed in now? Well, yeah, whenever you look at any market, when you look at any Forex trade, when you look at anything, you look after the event and you think, ah. But the, the point was that the decision I made at the time I was happy with, and I, ultimately I'm happy because I was happy to take what the market was willing to give me. And you need to learn that mentality for trading anything because after the event with hindsight goggles on, and hindsight goggles are what most of the marketers use. You know, in the Forex world, it would be, oh, well, I bought here and I sold there. Now, as it was, I did buy down here as I shared with you at the time. Um, and I'm going to go through, I'll go through some of the stock situation at the minute. I'm going to go also through my bias and why I did what I did and why I'm comfortable with it. And also how you use the bias, as we know, when we're trading Forex. And also my plan over the next year or so what to do, because uh, in the last couple of years, made shed load of money out of crypto, but that was using the same strategy and the same tactics and the same N2 system that I use for Forex. So the advantage for all of us is that you can use the same strategy for all markets. And I've shown you this repeatedly in recent months and well, the last 18 months, really, in terms of using the same thing on stocks as well as. Um, so... My, this is this is the scenario. So for me, I showed you how I wasn't interested in buying. I don't normally buy blue chip stocks in America. I have zero interest in making five, six percent a year and being happy for it and getting a two, three percent divvy. I'm not interested. So my strategy, my philosophy is the same with Forex is that I only want to catch a big one. So I showed you before what I've done with Apple uh, in previous sessions. I initially bought Apple in here at 140. Uh, and the reason why I wasn't interested before, because the potential reward did not outstrip the potential risk. But once we started getting down here, then I started to think, well, look, on an American stock, there is the potential on one of the biggest in, on the planet to make 30%. And I say, your average fund, I was looking at some funds yesterday. Somebody asked me to look at a bond fund. This bond fund's got nearly a billion dollars in it. It's got full-time management in it, and it's not made any money net of fees in the last nine years. I think they made 0.74% over 10 years. And these dudes are sat there all day saying, well, what bond should we get into? I have no interest in this. I have no interest, no disrespect to any conventional financial advisor who may be with us today. It just doesn't, it doesn't interest me. It doesn't appeal to me. So I want to catch a big one. So when Apple dropped down here, then Apple then became interesting because of potential reward. And then when it got down to 130, I showed you, I, I had orders in, I had orders in here, here. I then said this was like a stink bid. So what I partly with the stink bid is I'm looking back to what happened with the COVID crash and the COVID crash. If we go into a full blown crash in the stock market, which is my bias at this moment in time, then I would sell the shed, sell the house. I would be piling into Apple down here, as would anybody else with Alpha Brain. But equally, if we get back down to 100 bucks, I will buy it again. We get to 120, 130, I may well buy. But I suspect that this crash is going to be uh, a very big one, and it could be very, very fast and very deep. So I'm out. On the flip side, I may be completely wrong. This may go to all-time highs, but because it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever, and it doesn't agree with my bias then I don't care. It can go where it wants to go. It goes off into la la land. That's fine by me. Similarly with Apple. Uh, so with Apple, I think I made Apple in the end. I think I ended up with about 20% because it went net down to here. So I made 20% on Apple and say normally on a, a normal stock year, you might make that over two or three years. Amazon is slightly better. I made 30%, I think, on Amazon, 35%. And again, I got out of here and it's kept going. Technically, you could see the 200 EMA was in the way. Amazon have laid off 100,000 people around the world. Uh, they are planning for the recession as we speak. And ultimately, 
if we do go into recession, well, if we are in a recession, because apart from Biden and his cronies who say they've changed the definition, then technically the US is in a recession. And if it turns out to be a bad one, and I suspect that it may well be, then Amazon is not going to sell too many luxury goods. The focus then will shift to staple uh, things that people, everybody needs. So it can't be good for Amazon is my thinking. Uh, Ashley's saying, Amazon workers in Swindon, near where Ashley lives, are going on protest on a strike due to being given a 12 pence, 12 pence pay rise. So they've been given 15 cents pay rise when inflation officially in the UK is, is, is likely to hit 13%. That is scandalous. That is insane. I saw an ad actually the other day for a waiter in New York, and the basic wage was $2.50. $2.50. It's scandalous. And because, as as you probably know, the Americans with us will know that waiters and hospitality staff make their money through their tips. But how the hell can anybody justify paying a basic wage of two fifty an hour. I mean, it's scandalous. They spend more, double that on the coffee on the way into work on the morning. Anyway, so that was Amazon. I got out of that. I am in gold and silver. Gold and silver is dropping. I do not sell this the physical metal, nor am I selling gold and silver mining stocks. I, in fact, yesterday I was buying some more because if the normal stock market goes in a run-up, then gold goes down, and that then is a buying opportunity for me. This was the buying opportunity the about three weeks ago, and I'd shared this with you going back years. This was a massive area, previous support and resistance. Gold miners cost some roughly twelve fifty to get it out of the ground. Anything lower than here, I will be buying more. And uh, to leverage it, I am buying mining stocks as well, some of which are on here. Bought silver as well. Uh, it's more clear on the Forex chart I've shared with you in the past, but I had levels of 2019 and 18. And uh, this one, this is one of the silver miners that I have bought. And I have an order in uh, an alarm set down here to buy more at 520. And this one is one of those. This was the COVID crash. So the COVID crash, you stink bit area is down here. The advantage of mining stocks, and why I talk about leverage, I don't use leverage on anything other than Forex, but mining stocks is a way to leverage the profit in metals. And the reason being that these companies have already got fixed overheads. So for them, for them to pull out of the ground gold that is selling at $1,800 an ounce, it's costing them the same amount of money if it's going out at $2,000 an ounce and two two as we got to the other week. So they exponentially make a lot more profit. That is why I use them for leverage. I also do hold some physical metals. Bitcoin, I keep getting asked by people, what would you do about crypto? If I was buying any, if I if I was only going to buy a few things, I would buy some Bitcoin and I would buy some Ethereum. Not financial advice. There is a chance that this could tank further and get dragged down with the stock market. If it does, I will buy more. And I did that with Ethereum the other week. I'd said to folks when it was dropping, I was going to buy a thousand. I also had an order in at eight fifty that didn't quite get there. And I posted last week. I'd sold my Ethereum. At for a 60% profit, I think it was. This is not my core holding. This is trading. So I'd sold it in here for 60 odd percent profit. And somebody said to me, well, why did you do that? Well, I had 10 grand in it. There is a danger it was going to drop. I've just made $6,000. I got twitchy bum a bit and thought, no, I'm going to take the profit and it's going to and I'll let it go. And if it drops down again, I will buy more on the dip. And there is something coming up uh, technically with Ethereum in the next few weeks that a lot of these big, if you're on any of these marketing lists from these US companies that lure you in at $99 a month and then try to flog you things at five grand and two and a half grand for their super top tips, their platinum level stuff. Uh, there's a lots of them talking about Ethereum at the moment and the, and the a fork that's coming up and the change to the technology. It quite possibly already factored in. So and, and there may be an issue and it might not work as well as it should. Um, some more mining stock, Ford. I also bought some Ford and sold that the other week. So again, I'd shown you how I was buying down at 11 and I got out with 30% profit and it has kept going and technically it could keep going to the moon. But if, if there is a recession, if inflation is double what the US government are telling people and after the nonsense of Biden last week saying that there was zero inflation in July, oh, dear me, I, I posted 
tested on Twitter. They're really testing the theory just to see how stupid people can be if they seriously believe this nonsense that's going through. And this is not a political statement for me. I wouldn't vote for either party in America. It it kind of it saddens me to watch the way I have American friends, I've got lots of American clients. It saddens me what's going on in America. I wouldn't vote for either of them. So I'm not having a pop at the Democrats over the Republicans or Biden, certainly over Trump. Um, helium is one I have. This is a very speculative mining play for Tanzania. Uh, Mag is another one. Not Nvidia. I sold some Nvidia the other week. Uh, I do actually want to hold this again. Uh, there was a big hoo ha about Pelosi's husband at eight million in this, and uh, <laughs> there were memes going out when she'd gone to Taiwan, saying uh, sending memes saying that she was telling her husband sell, 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 because of course it dropped. Uh, PayPal I've been in for a while. Rig is an oil. Uh, they own oil rigs, Transoceanic, and that came about because one of my clients used to work in the oil industry and is very familiar with it. Uh, Rolls-Royce I have in the UK. Some more. Oh, Shop. I got out of Shop the other day, Shopify. I cost averaged at the bottom to dig my way out of a hole because I'd originally bought up here. I also, thankfully, got out of Unity Software. Uh, I'd said to folks before, this was a mistake on my part. This was a tech stock I should not have bought what I did. I bought in here. But then I bought heavily down at the bottom here. And there was a rumor that, well, there's not a rumor. There is talk of a takeover a merger at the moment, although it seems unlikely. So it shot up, thankfully, I managed because I bought more down here to get out. So I'm not buying that again. Uh, uranium, I do buy metals and I am buying uranium. I have an order in back down here at $3.10 to buy more of uranium. Another precious metal, Zoom, I'm still in Zoom. I periodically take profit from this. I think even if we go into recession, I'm still using it. Lots of people around the world still working from home. Uh, I And I've shown you this before. The potential upside of this is 800%, I believe. So the chances of this going to zilch are considerably less, uh, 500%, only 500% on a blue chip American stock. So I, I'm quite happy to co keep Zoom. And I think Zoom is the only, oh, I've still got Zoom and I've still got a bit of Rolls Royce. Uh, the Rolls Royce is bought and paid for. Other than that, I keep my eye, I said to folks, keep your eye on what Berkshire Hathaway are doing. Uh, they have been buying heavily uh, oil, one of the big oil companies they bought the other day, uh, another one for four. General Motors, I bought Ford instead of General Motors. That's still on the way up. Bank of America is more thinking for the future. Meta, Facebook, not interested in buying it. Microsoft came up to 200 EMA trend line. If I was going to get involved in anything, I would have been thinking of a short rather long. It's gone along with this. And all of this is because of the inflation data that came out the other day and the interpretation and the way that the US government and Treasury have decided to interpret it. And then these finally, these are big mining stocks. And what I'm planning to do is to take profit from smaller miners and then eventually move the profits into these bigger ones because they pay substantial dividends or decent dividends. And again, if you can buy, let's say, for example, this one's Franco Nevada. Um, if you could buy this, if you bought it at 168 the other month and the dividend is 5%, then obviously if you can buy it at a discount and they're still paying the divvy, then you are then getting a significantly bigger divvy. So I am looking. And I, this is all to do with the fact that markets move in cycles and we go through phases. Say we had a real easy ride with crypto for 18 months. It was, I don't know anybody who didn't make any money in crypto. That in itself is causing a problem because a lot of young people now who got sucked in with it think that this is what stocks do. They're all mentally ordering the Ferraris and now they're suddenly in a world of hurt and they don't know what to do because they're just, that's what they've been used to. And for some of the older um for, you know, people early 30s, they've not really been adults whilst we've had a major crash. Those of us who remember 2008 and the dot-com crash uh, still carry the baggage, but also means it hopefully makes us a bit smarter. Anyway, that's what I've done. I don't have any issue with why I did it. And as you know, I start each week, I look at what's going on around the world in stock markets. The NASDAQ has broken higher because of this inflation. Again, I just don't, it doesn't make any sense. I don't care. I'm not getting involved. Dow Jones is at the main area at the minute. S&P is now at the main area. So this is make your mind up time for the S&P as well. So the danger is if there is a drop, it could well be, well, it 
probably going to be much harder, much quicker than uh, than the move up. Eurostox wouldn't touch with the barge pole. The eurozone screwed. UK, I mean, the UK Bank of England said last week they admitted um, they are independent of the government and therefore they have admitted that there is going to be a recession and things are going to get worse. And they've admitted that by the end of the year, I anticipate inflation at 13%. So this the UK economy is not in a great place. I am not interested in buying. Here was the place I would have been interested if I had I decided to go down the UK stocks route. But the potential here was not su- sufficient for me to get involved because I just shown you the blue chip American ones. There was potential 20, 30, 40, 50% profit. Um, Berkshire Hathaway, I've just shown you, keep my eye on that. Apple, we've already looked at, looked at the rest of this, I think. So biases and what's going on and trying to de- de- decipher the messages that are being sent out. This nonsense the other day of Biden stood there saying that great news, guys, there was 0% inflation in July. No, there wasn't, you clown. It just was it had not gone up anymore, and it had come down slightly year on year, but it was still officially 8.5%. And it don't, well, old figures-wise, when they use the old calculation, it's still at 17%. I shared something on Twitter the other week where as an accountant in the UK had done the identical shop from the year before and his shopping basket was up 41%. Rents in the major cities are up 12, 14%. Smoke and mirrors, guys, you've got to learn to to look behind the news. Now, here, the uh, data that came out the other day saying that the US is in recession and then they, they came out, the US government saying that they've changed the definition And what was really sad there, that Wikipedia then allowed them to change it and then locked it. So that kind of takes away Wikipedia as being some independent stream. Um, So this is some of the data going on what's been going on. And then other things, as you have a look through here, that consumer credit is through the roof in America. People are buying, borrowing massive amounts on their credit cards. The total debt level for folks, I think, is $16 trillion in the USA. And then we're talking about uh, this situation with employment figures often is a prelude for the last 67 years, but one of the most dangerous times for the economy. Um, This was the big thing. This was why I said to you 10 days ago, look behind the news. So the news came out in the USA that the jobless NFP figure was 525,000. That is amazing. That is double what was expected. Wow, maybe the US is not going into recession. However, when they dug deeper into the data, there were 71,000 less full-time jobs. That's people earning full-time money who are getting medical care, who are paying their full taxes, et cetera, et cetera, good for the economy when full-time jobs have been created. But in actual fact, there were 384,000 plus jobs created that were part-time. And as somebody mentioned in the forum, and in the US, if if folks work less than 32 hours a week, they are not entitled to benefits, they're not entitled to medical. And also the the folks questioning, well, how many people are having to get a part-time job just to get through on top of their additional jobs? Uh, multiple jobs, 92,000. So again, dig behind the news. Uh, funny thing here about Bill Gates having to explain the, the what the internet was going to do to this this guy. I don't know who he is. Um, and he was kind of saying, well, the gist of it was you were mad. This is more to do with crypto. And Germany's in recession, et cetera, et cetera. So if you like, dig through my feed um this is very funny <laughs> i honestly don't know why you joined the gym Simon. <laughs> oh i like that one uh here american household debt hits record 16.2 trillion dollars as mortgages credit cards and spending swell and delinquencies uh here i i i'm i'm not in the usa i thought this was a a, a, a doppelganger a, a double a comedian <laughs> this This is the Speaker of the House of the USA. And she said that China is one of the strongest democracies and freest societies in the world. Why is she on? And this one's nodding. I mean, she's just going along with it. Oh, 
here. US food prices in July, uh, highest increase since 1979. The gist of it all, as I said earlier, is look behind the news, make your own mind up. I might be wrong. Uh, I accept the fact I might be wrong, but I just, nothing that I read and uh, the, the knowledge that I've gained over doing this for 30 years, none of it supports the theory to me that the, the world is not heading for trouble. Um, how, another little clue. So this is published yesterday. Home builders say US is in a housing recession. The sentiment turns negative. I saw some houses in, I think it was Nevada the other day, a uh, million dollar plus houses. The folks were dropping them by 250,000. Uh, the Google searches, they were saying yesterday, there's been a surge in the USA for folks uh, searching for how to sell your house fast. So lots and lots of clues. Philip says, Phil says, yes, she's wacky. I say, I'm not interested in the politics. Pelosi, they're all uh, they're all a shower. I haven't got respect for one of them. So just excuse me. I just need to take a sip of my tea. But yeah, that, I mean, and the other thing is, what possible justification could America have for that idiot to go to Taiwan and wind the Chinese up at a time when already that we have uh, the other superpower, the Russians doing what they're doing in the Ukraine. I mean, not, absolutely nonsensical. Um, investor credit card increased, debt uh, increased in the US by 46 billion in quarter two of this year's inflation was continue. And I just said, I think the total debt is $16.15 trillion. That's household debt in the USA. That is very, very scary. But Always listen to the other side of the argument. This firm, <laughs> if you think back to 2008, when S, um, the ratings agencies gave Lehman Brothers a AAA rating the day before they went bankrupt, uh, this firm <laughs> uh, <laughs> is similar. This is the equivalent of the ratings firm. They say, no, it's not necessarily a, a clue that things have got to go bad. Ah, oh, dear. Uh, this guy, uh, Ashley sent me this this morning. This guy was the gent behind the big short um, uh, 2008. And it turns out he sold all his stocks in the second quarter as well. So maybe my idea wasn't so bad. Um, right. Digging behind the news again. So this morning, there has been GBP average earnings index. So as we know, growth, inflation and interest rates are the key things that we look for for the strength of an economy. So on the surface, it looks as though the revision was up last month. And the so this is for three months. And the average wages in the UK are up 5.1%. Well, if you accepted that news at face value, then you might have piled in straight away to buy the pound because ooh, wages are going up. But as they point out in this um, article, this is why it's so relevant in the USA. If the true, well, okay, let's accept the government figure. The, the inflation is running at 8%. If your pay rise is 2 3 4%, or Amazon workers in Swindon, as Ashley just pointed out, 12 pence, <laughs> then you are clearly falling behind. So this article here is, as it says, inflation drives the fastest fall in real pay on record. So good news, bad news, depending on... On the article writer, woohoo, the, the average wage in the UK up, that's a positive. Uh, hang on a second. Yes, but because inflation's up so much, people are actually worse off than they have been for a very long time. And again, I quickly scanned this this morning. Uh, the gap between pay growth and inflation is the biggest since records began more than 20 years ago. So another drip drip suggesting that things ain't going the way that governments are trying to tell us. And the house prices in the UK for the first time this year have dropped. Been a major boom in house prices in the UK because of COVID. Lots of people moving out of London, selling a one bed flat and moving up north and buying a three, four bed detached, uh, as, as has gone on in the USA as well. So this week, Pierre, Ashley's going to cover with us uh, some earth and sky. He's looking for shorts. I, uh, Tienis was talking about remember the bigger picture. So as he said here, this is talking a similar thing to me. Don't be in a rush just to accept this good news from the USA because let's face it, it's BS. And then last week I did a post and I was saying managing risk is key. There are times when trading Forex is easy. And this year we've been relatively easy and we've had some really good runs. 
the last week it got messy and it got messy because of this news. So the point I was making in here, and I know two people who are in this room today who let trades run through CPI, you need to go into the corner of the room and sit on the naughty stool because I told everybody repeatedly not to let trades run through CPI. I, I know, I know you are one of them. I've seen it. Um, managing risk is key in trading, I explained. Last week, I, I was in the Swissy, I was in the CAD, and I closed them before the news came out. I anticipated that the inflation figure was likely to be better than uh, expected. And James made a comment in the forum. The month before, they were making all sorts of noises and justifications for why the prices were going up to kind of soften the blow when the inflation rate went up. This month just gone, they didn't say boo-hoo. So it was nailed on virtually that it was going to go on. But then the issue is folks think, oh, well, if it's going to go up, then I'm going to buy the dollar. But as we saw, the USD dropped the, against the Swiss and against the CAD. Why? Well, because the market makers, it's a great time for them to make the money. And then the analysts will tell you it's because it was already factored in. But the moral of the story is it's an idiot's game if you're going to trade through major news, which is why I told you in advance. And at the end of the week, I ended up with a tiny amount. Uh, but I didn't lose because I was careful. And how you perform when things are more difficult and when the, when dangerous news events uh, appear will define your success or failure as a trader. It is that serious. And as I said earlier, you can look at different markets as well. I've done a lot with stocks this year. I don't normally buy stocks. I don't buy stocks for the reasons I explained because I'm not interested in making 5% a year on anything. Uh, so and then prior prior to that with crypto we made an insane amount of money on crypto so just improve your skills and just be cautious and equally i was in the aussie dollar on friday and i made and showed in the video i got out because i didn't want to leave it over the weekend sod's law it's now dropped 100 pips uh monday and i've missed it but i i didn't lose you know and that's the key to this game is in minimizing the losses when you catch a trade Go for trades are going to give you at least twice what you risk, et cetera. Ashley shared some of his trading setups of the week. Uh, Phil said some of his as well as. I know Ashley made, I think you were up 60, 70 pips in the Euro Aussie dollar. So Ashley was sharing what he's done there. Uh, here you go. So currently plus 60 pips. So Ashley pre-planned that and shared it as well. Ashley is one of my former private students. And Ashley will also, along with TNS, be available to teach folks privately. He's been working with some of my private clients at the moment uh, and starting in a couple of weeks time, he will be available for folks if they want to hire him for a month and we will send you the details out about that. But that would certainly speed up folks progress very quickly. Um, Pierre's posted his analysis for the week ahead and then Ashley's just commented here. Uh, stocks quickly now, we'll do this another day. These are mining stocks that I'm looking at. Uh, they, I'm not buying all of these, obviously, but I'm just keeping my eye on And I keep an eye on the sector in general. And uh, these are from a, a guy whose opinion I respect. So these are some of his mining stocks as well. Petrol, uh, energy on petrol. Just, I just started to build this one. So I'm keeping my eye on potential energy stocks because at the end of the day, if we go into recession, people still need energy. Also watching petrol, if we get a big drop on some of the oil companies, I would be tempted to buy into those sooner rather than later. And then this is just the start of things, trying to think of companies that will do well, sectors that will do well in um, recessions. And healthcare is one of the ones that I particularly want to look at. And then again, I'm just watching a lot of the blue chips. I say I just got this the other day, so I'm just starting to build this. Okay, let's have a look at some forex now. Again, let me have a sip of my tea. Anybody got any comments? Anything you want me to ask? Uh, comment about? Stick it in the chat box now. I just have a quick drink. Oh, the Swissy and the CAD gems, I think you're probably referring to, yeah. So overnight, Australia, the monetary policy meeting minutes. So we saw what they did uh, this last month. So this then was the notes from the meeting. And I've explained before, you should get in the habit of reading these. And there's also a comment in here 
that the situation in China is not going to be good for Australia as well as. And when you read the minutes, there's some highlights pointed out on here. Now, Australia didn't get hammered like the rest of us did 2008, 2009. And it looks as though they're going to avoid it again this time. They're saying the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, inflation will decline back to the top of the 2 to 3% range by the end of 2024. Um, and they're expecting it to peak sooner rather than later. Increase in interest rates over recent months has been required to bring inflation back to target. House and spending behavior, key source of uncertainty. People are not spending, then that's clearly not good for the economy. And you can have a look in here and have a look in more detail. They're talking about what's going on around the world. They're talking about China. Why is China important to Australia, guys? And also they're talking about iron ore. Why is iron ore important to Australia? Because iron ore has dropped recently. Come on, come on, come on. Why is China and why is iron ore important for Australia? So they're saying here inflation in other countries is 7 to 10%. In Australia, it's uh, much less and they're expecting it to be. Outlook for growth, they're still looking at growth, which many other countries are not as well. So yes, they're saying that China is a major importer from Australia. It's Australia's biggest trading partner, James, correct? Uh, Frank, who's from Australia, says it's their main export and they are our main customer. And James says biggest export. True. So what they're talking about in here, they're commenting about iron ore and they're commenting about uh, China. And I've shown you this many times before. This is OEC.world. Why China and Australia is in, uh, iron ore and China is important to Australia. Iron ore is their biggest export and China is their biggest customer. So clearly, if China is in a mess, and they put out some positive data the other day, but I believe that less than what the Fed put out. Um, if you if your biggest customer politically, there's been shenanigans going on as well as uh, the Chinese keep trying to bully the Australians into not getting involved with America against Taiwan. Uh, clearly, that's not good for the Australian economy. And I started this conversation talking about a bias. So the bias for me is still for the Aussie dollar is down. Uh, Osh Ashley says, how does the housing market affect Australia if it crashes? I mean, if China housing market crashes, um, well, they would buy less materials, I would think. Uh, I'm not expert enough on that one, actually, to know, to be honest. I don't know if China buys lots of materials uh, specifically for housing from Australia, but clearly they, they if there are fewer houses in, in China, there are thousands and thousands tens of thousands of apartment blocks that are nearly finished in housing complexes where the builders have either gone bust or have just stopped and i suppose if there's less demand for energy for the building less demand for energy for folks when they're living in these houses then that perhaps could reduce the amount of coal briquettes they import i don't know i wouldn't know enough about it bit of research for you there ashley an article to write later in the week please <laughs> you keep your, hand, keep your hand down now. Uh, this is iron ore prices. So this was a graph I found this morning. And if we have a look at iron ore over the last month, it did peak at 217. And today it's 109. So iron ore, if there's a recession, then the need for iron reduces. And iron, they're using steel, don't they? So steel is construction. Not good if the Chinese housing market is in a mess and the debt from the Chinese housing market is absolutely colossal. And three, four months ago, the Chinese government bailed out Everglade, is it they're called? The, the, the massive uh, company, property company in China. So it's a mess, it's a mess. And, but that gives me the bias. So a long story short with that, if you do that with all of the majors and come up with an opinion, then it gives you and the advantage when it comes to trading Forex. Whew. So, dollar index. Said last week, because of the data, it looked as though the dollar index was going to break. And I said to folks, do not pay any attention to this unless or until the weekly breaks and closes clearly below. And it didn't. And it's promptly bounced back up again. This was just an overreaction to the nonsense of the way that the news was interpreted. This was nothing to do 
with the scenario changing vis-a-vis -vis the dollar. So for me, on, there will be lots of people will have gone off shorting stuff based on this. Uh, you know, when you have something, a trend line of a big area and a 55 EMA and a 78.6 FIB, all in the recent area and previous major support and resistance all in the same place, the probability of this breaking through was less than the probability of a rebound for multiple reasons. So that was the thinking for me. So don't take one day's isolated news. A, don't take it as gospel. And B, don't build it. Don't change your bias just because some bit of news has come out, particularly when you dig behind that news and realize what's really going on. Natural gas going back up again, which is not good for inflation. Oil is dropping. Remember, I have on my portfolio checklist, I am watching oil company prices. I do think oil will continue to go up, and I certainly think it will be above $100 a barrel. And I am looking for pullbacks on this to give me clues about maybe starting to get involved in some oil companies. S&P 500, um, this chart has, got, has broken. I show you, on, I have it on TradingView. I think I have it here. So I have it that it's at the level at the minute. Uh, take your pick, really, which one you believe. Um, well, in retrospect, that's the that's the level. I'd say I just I don't subscribe to it, so it's easy for me. I, I, I'm moveon.com. US dollar Swissy. I had an order last week. Now this is a variant on don't trade the news, and the only variant I have is that this was the news here. So if we get an overreaction from news, then sometimes I will take a trade based on the fact of if this thing tanks, where is it probably going to stop? And I showed you that on the Euro Aussie a couple of weeks ago. There's a video in my blog. I took a short on the Euro Aussie at an area of multiple reasons that I'd waited for for a couple of weeks. And yet I had folks who cancelled the order because they panicked when it got near it because it was going so fast. So my thinking here with this one was, if this got all the way down here, that would be 240 pips movement when the average is 80. And in here, I've got a monthly 55, a monthly 200 EMA. I have major previous support and resistance. I've got the whole number. If this thing was going to stop anywhere, it was probably going to stop there. So that's the only time and the only variant I have for taking news trades is if it's far enough away from current price. USD CAD at the minute, it bounced off the 55 this morning. Uh, yesterday, I didn't take it. Um, it. This is just too messy, too choppy. If those of you caught it, well done. Aussie dollar, this I say, I was in this last week. I showed you the video where I, I got out of the trade, being a good boy on Friday and said, look, it was coming up to here. Uh, I wasn't willing to let it run over the weekend with a 30 pit profit locked in. So I cancelled it and it's now, it's now 140. <laughs> so whatever I said earlier about no regrets. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, on a serious note, that was the sensible thing to do. Sometimes it works against you. Sometimes it works for you. But if I'd have left it going, it would have been gambling. It could quite easily jump a stop and gone off on a run. Uh, Euro USD. I only want to sell this, and I, th I think that this is quite probably going to have another run at one for one, and it might get through this time. But again, that was the sweet spot last week. I didn't take it. I can't remember why, but that was the sweet spot. Multiple reasons. Uh, I think I was in something else, I think. At pound USD, I only want to short this as well. But again, it, it, that's the area to watch, but it's wishy-washy. Euro pound, not touching at the minute. It can't make its mind up. I want it to clearly break up or clearly break down. New Zealand dollar, I want the pullback back up here. Aussie New Zealand, we had a good run on this, thanks to one of my private students. Uh, it turned out it wasn't Paul. He admitted it wasn't him. I think it might have been Ishak. Um, the other week, I showed you in the live session, last time I was with you, we were watching this, and I said that that was the trade of the week set up. We were during the live session, we were up here and it was coming down into here. That was clearly a major area. It's done it again. I haven't taken it because I don't have the multiple reasons, but clearly at the moment, this is bouncing from here to here. And it does often range, does this pair? And we are in the summer in the northern hemisphere at least. So it, it's an area to watch. The only suggestion I could make is you watch it on a four hour. 
This is that Eurowazi, and this is the one I showed you the other, I took the other week. This was where I took it. I don't think we're in this. Are we in this or not? No. Uh, this was where I took it after that news. So this was the news announcement on the four hour. And the daily range, there's a video in my blog about this. The daily range, by the time it got up here, was twice the average daily range. That's where I took it last time. And I made the video. I can't remember what got out. I think we came out with about 160, 170 pips. I then had the order in again, missed it this time. And at the moment, it's miles away. Um, it's so far away from everything, even on the four hour. I don't have multiple reasons for it. The only thing you could watch is perhaps in here. Uh, and if not, follow Ashley in the forum. He's he's up 60 pips on this. So he's your man for that one. Uh, he's definitely your man for the pound Aussie. I don't like this bear. This is why I didn't take it and, and don't take them down at the bottom. Yes, it's tempting, but no, no multiple reasons for the stop. You're a cad, another one. I need a big pullback. Uh, you're in New Zealand. I need a big pullback. Pound cad. Mm, yeah. It's one of those. It's weak, guys. You need a bigger pullback, really. Aussie CAD missed it this morning, yesterday again. So the Aussie or the Aussie CAD and the Aussie Swissy, I think, is was another good setup as well. I had a loss on this yesterday, pound New Zealand. I shorted in here uh, and I had my stop just above here. Damn thing came out this morning and took me out on that one. Uh, risk reward wasn't great on it because we have got this weekly trend line down here, but it was one to two. So I took it anyway, it lost, uh, bounced off. I, where was I in? Oh, I was in here yesterday, wasn't it? Monday, yeah. So it, anyway, it lost. Moveon.com. Pound yen, don't like it, don't trade it. But if you are, that's the area, 160 whole number. Uh, if we fib closer now, we will be looking 61.8 fib. Lots going on here. If you trade the pound yen, then 160 clearly is a massive area. Cad Swissy, one of my private guys, likes this one. I think... He or she's looking in here. I don't think I've ever traded it, to be honest. Aussie Swissy, I have the order way back up here. Stop looks massive, but it's just the chart. So 60 pip stop for a potential 220 pip gain. And again, from a uh, correlation point of view, you don't take all of these, obviously. New Zealand Swiss is miles away. Dollar yen, I don't have anywhere for the stop. Haven't for weeks and weeks and weeks, although I think Ashley shorted at 135 the other week. Uh, you're a yen in the zone as well. So some of the yens are kind of tempting at the moment. In general, I don't see too much this week that's of great interest to me, but I am a little bit preoccupied with other stuff as well. as So we'll go over to Ashley. He's watching stuff every day. Quit his job the other month, got married last week. Um, and he now is working with us here at Forex Mentor Pro as well. as So over to you, Ashley. Do you want to share your screen? Hi, everyone. Hi, Mark. Stop sharing I'll mine. I'll just share my screen. One second. Let me know when you can see the screen. Yep. Aussie dollar, pound New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. So this week, we actually do have the pairs meeting the rules, which is good. Um, and Pierre has six pairs that he, he is looking at and he's going with the short because the uh, trend on the short side is much stronger on the long side. Um, so the first one he has is the pound New Zealand. Uh, I personally just don't like this pair because uh, it just tends to spike a lot. Um, I would prefer either the Euro New Zealand or the, Ca or the pound Aussie because they are correlated but uh, this one tends to spike a lot. Uh, but the area here we have is around 1.9700 ish. So you can look to put your stop there above the EMAs. It's just that the stop is quite big. Um, so it's all about your risk appetite really, but we do have the weekly resistance here. So if you are too hesitant on it, you could try being more conservative and just go above here, and then you get a slightly better stop. Um, but that's the area. <clears throat> you'll have to go on the shorter time frames uh, when the price comes in that area here. Um, then we have the Euro New Zealand. So we did have the orders up here, but looks like I'll have to cancel them because 
price is very, very far away. I think it's like, yeah, nearly 500 pips. But don't be surprised because this pair can move quite fast. And it does do sometimes 300 pips, depending on if there's a news event coming out. Uh, but at the moment, we have the short region here at 169.50. And you can look to put your stop around 65 pips. And you're looking for a risk reward of around 220 pips. Now, the problem we have with most of these pairs is the weekly pivot is coming in the way. So be aware of that uh, when you take the when you take the trade. Um, but yeah, this this region looks quite good. It's just you have to risk a little more compared to the other pairs. Uh, but that's the area to focus on. Then um, we have the pound Swissy, uh, which does have a good good um, trend at the moment here on the four hour. Uh, again, the weekly pivot is in the way, but the stop is a lot better compared to the other ones. So you're risking only around 40 pips. And if we take out the weekly pivot here, then you're looking for around 120 pip gain. The problem we have with this Swiss pairs at the moment is if the USD Swiss keeps heading higher, then these pairs, the cross pairs with the cats, cat Swiss, pound Swiss, they are likely to go up. As you can see at the moment, the cat Swiss is also heading higher. It did break on the weekly below the EMAs. Uh, so this is a little of a gray area and a, a bit of a 50 50 trade you're going to take. However, you're risking only around 32 pips. So it is worth a shot, but it's more of an intraday trade because you are looking to get around 70 odd pips from a 30 pip stop. Uh, but this looks quite attractive uh, among the other ones. If you're risking less, uh, 32 pip stop and you're looking around 70 pip gain. At the moment, you would look to short it because uh, if you look on the M2, uh, it's not done a clean break below the 200 moving average on the weekly, uh, but it has stopped below it. Um, but if the USD Swiss heads higher, then this could easily get picked up because the Swiss is getting weaker, and then it would just push the push the CAD Swiss higher. So at the moment, I'm not trying to get involved with it, uh, but it did give me quite a few good trades uh, when I was longing it, uh, which I was sharing with you down here. So I longed it down there, got 140 pips. Then again, I think I got like 70 pips out of it here. And then eventually it lost out when the uh, USD PPI news came out last week. So I got taken out somewhere down here for around 50 pips. Uh, but at the moment, leaving it alone. Then the pound Aussie, so the reason why I did not take this because the I took the Euro Aussie uh, simply because the, there was the pound um, unemployment news coming out today. So I went with the Euro Aussie because I did not see any news that was going to affect it yesterday. Uh, however, the Euro um, sentiment came out, which was quite negative, I believe. So here trade balance was minus. And then the economic sentiment is minus as well. So it's not looking good here. And that's the reason why I think the euro could head uh, further down. And over here, we have the region for the pound Aussie. You can look around 70 pips stop. Again, you have the weekly pivot in the way. It is struggling down here at the moment, but you have a 200 pip potential to make. And then Euro Aussie over here, I'd shown this on the forum. So I had taken this, this is on my demo. And then the screenshot I added, which was on my um, on my live account. And I was currently out at that moment. So I did take some profit off when I was around 80 pips in profit here. I think it was down here. But what I did was I'd entered here. I got nearly taken out because I think my stop was somewhere around here. But then I saw that it was going to reverse on the shorter time frame, so I entered down here. So that was quite a good entry, and that gave me around 80 pips. And at the moment, I'm still holding it. My stop is still around here, as you can see. Um, so yeah, just holding onto that one. 
I do think this one could head down and I'm looking to get out of around here at 100 pips at 144 that is and that's all I have for this week guys I was looking at Urian um, this one here on the four hour I was just fibbing it it rejected the 78.6 fib so if it does come back around somewhere here it does look quite good for a short trade around 70 pips and you can look to trade it back down around 250 pips so you do have the trend line here it is making lower highs uh, lower lows um, so just going with the trend uh, but it does look quite good down here around 50 60 pip stop and you can look to trade it back down to the 200 ema and that's all i have mark okay thank you very much uh you're getting that professional at this now you're doing it in five minutes i used to normally <laughs> I yeah. used to only leave you five minutes. That's probably the reason. Okay. Anybody have any questions on anything that we've looked at today? Anybody got any charts that you would like Ashley or me to have a quick look at for you? Any potential setups or questions or anything? Quick uh, look at yep. the New Zealand CAD for a long, says Phil. New Zealand CAD. Okay. Yeah. Do, 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 do. New Zealand CAD, uh, M2 or Earth and Sky. Let's look at both. So on the strength indicator, Pierre had it for a long, I believe. Um, so if we take that to there, and then your region would be anywhere down here. So at the moment, if you're, Earth and sky doesn't really meet the rules, but on the strength indicator, it did head higher. Um, it has broken the weekly pivot and is currently coming in the zone. Um, you can look to long it down here, 20 pip stop. I mean, you're not risking a lot. Um, so it, it is a valid setup. Uh, I'm just, I just don't like this pair really because it just tends to spike a lot. But yeah, if you're looking to long, then you could. Uh, but if we look at on the Mox M2, on the weekly, you don't have much, can't really put a trend line down here. Uh, uh, trend line is quite far away. And then if you go on the daily, the region that should scream at you is down here at 0.83600. Maybe if you go a bit lower to be a bit more conservative, then 0.83500, and you will look to put your stop down there. Um, that's what I would usually do, if I, because I mainly trade the M2. So I would look for a short down there. I, I stopped trading this pair just because it doesn't really uh, respect the EMAs that much. Uh, at the start, I used to trade it, uh, but yeah, looks more attractive for a short than a long. That's yeah, what I think. You, yeah, if you look at the 200 EMA March this year, it just kept slicing straight through it, didn't it? And then coming back down again. Yeah. The, the one at the higher up one. That's that's the problem I had with it. Um, yeah. Yeah, it just I, tends to spike through. and It's a bit like the pound New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, I stopped trading that one as well. It's just like, taking a toll on my um, trading <laughs> stats. <laughs> Having said that, I mean, you were good at the pound Aussie and I just don't get on with the pound Aussie. So yeah. I, I think partly it's you get used to the character. I kind of explain to people, I mean, when I first started, all I did was trade the majors and that was easy because the majors have all got their own characteristics as to how they react to the news different times of the day. For example, we used to get it where we used to trade London Open and in those days, London, uh, the Asian session used to be very quiet. So the yeah. pound used to do 150 pips a day. And in Asia, it used to generally do 30. And then what used to happen is at seven o'clock when the European markets opened, there would be some movement, but more times than not, it would be fake outs. Then yeah. you get the main move, which was London. And because there's only been 30 pips of the movement, it would, it would surge one way or the other. And then about late morning, 11 o'clock, 11.30, it would go quiet. And I presume that the London traders had gone to lunch. 
and then it would go quiet until New York would open. So yeah. they, they do have characteristics. The thing difference now is when we're trading multiple pairs and lots of cross pairs, because for example, it's very tricky at the minute to say euro and the pound because of the, there's not the multiple reasons thing. Uh, this is why going back to what I was showing folks before about understanding the Aussie dollar, you know, if you understand the US economy, the British economy, the European economy, the Japanese economy, and the Aussie and the Kiwi, maybe the Swissy. I mean, it sounds a lot, but I mean, you get Googling and you can find uh, decent summaries anywhere. But if you understand five or six different economies, you can basically trade 30 pairs. Uh, yep. And then you, and because we're working from longer time frame, I, mean, I used to trade 15 minute charts, which was the worst thing I ever did. Because you're trading in longer time frames, you're just looking for this probability thing all the time. Yeah, uh, you are welcome, Clive. Thank you. He says thanks to Mark. I nicely. had also written an article on the uh, external blog. Maybe I should uh, post it in the forum. Yeah. Uh, but I was basically, you know, the article was about what is the best forex pair to trade, mm. and. Um, doing the research basically in the end of it it's like there is no there is no <laughs> perfect pair it's just every pair has a season where we can try to make our profits like you know yeah. new zealand swissy uh whatever whatever pair it is i think they all have their own season where yeah, we yeah. can profit to take the trades when they yeah. when it gives it to us yeah. I mean, that's that's basically it yeah, I think that's a good conclusion, is that? Because the thing is, as we know, I mean, I, I don't, didn't used to trade cross pairs. I've traded all sorts of stuff in the last few years. Um, and as you say, we just sometimes, some of them seem to work really well. And then you move on to the next one. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely understand that I agree with that conclusion.